Today we're covering the emotional drivers behind insomnia. So insomnia is about much more than just not sleeping. Right? Almost everyone struggles at some point or another in their lives with falling asleep or staying asleep. And it can even be like for specific periods of time where people struggle with that. And so it's very common uh, to have that occur when we have a shift in our lifestyle. So like a stressor or a worry, a job change, a move, a death, etc. And that is known as in- acute bouts of insomnia, right? And so that's kind of in the moment insomnia. And again, it can last for you know particular periods of time, but it's usually very easily uh, attributed to something happening kind of at that point in someone's life. Now, true insomnia or the insomnia that we're going to be talking about is it the chronic manifestation. Welcome back to the Mind Change Podcast. I'm your host, Heather McKean. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and download. It really helps us to continue to create all this great content for you and others and lets us know if we're meeting the needs of our community. Now, true insomnia or the insomnia that we're going to be talking about is the chronic manifestation, and that's characterized by at least three months of disturbed sleep patterns. Right, so for many people, it feels like insomnia just popped out of nowhere. But in reality, a lot was happening in your mind and body before you started to do insomnia regularly or chronically. So why didn't you know or notice? That's because the conscious mind had hijacked your brain so that it could ruminate on all the things that needed to be worried about. See, insomnia has its roots in our attempt to control things. So we like to think that we're in control as humans, right? And our conscious mind likes to believe that it is what is actually in control. When the truth is, it's our subconscious mind that actually runs about 95% of our daily operations. And sleep is so important because it's when the conscious mind actually shuts down and lets the subconscious mind file, filter, organize, and just do all the stuff it needs to do with all the input that has come in from each day. When we do not sleep, it's often because our conscious mind is having a difficult time letting go. It thinks that the way to be safe or to keep others safe is to be on constant alert, constantly in thought, in worry, in conversation about, in rumination about. So the conscious mind, which is our thoughts, thinking about our thoughts, right? Uh, The conscious mind believes that to let go would mean they don't care, right? To them, let go means that they they aren't worried about their person that they love anymore or that their, their environment anymore. So they care by worrying and trying to exert some level of control over a situation. And it just doesn't work. Not only does the worry and the attempt to control not work, but it also exhausts you and it keeps you in the conscious mind, which is really just you thinking thoughts about your thoughts. And folks, very little change can ever occur just by using our conscious mind. Luckily, at Mind Change, we deal in subconscious change, and we have helped countless people overcome insomnia. So let's talk about some of the additional possible emotional drivers behind insomnia, because we know that control and worry and and people who think worry is love or worry is care um, are often one of the big drivers behind insomnia. But there are some other possible emotional drivers, like you have learned to operate in a state of uh, chronic vigilance, right? And that can come 
because you have a difficult time letting go and releasing control. And you may have particular proofs and references of like when you didn't worry or you didn't think about something through or you didn't think through all the different things that something bad happened and you linked that to you being the one in control or if I would have just and the what ifs and the thinking over situations again and again and again. That is the act and the work of the conscious mind where you are really trying to think through every situation and, and control and if things will just go my way and if, we, if it would just be this way and if it would just be that way. And really all you're doing is just rehearsing and rehearsing and replaying and you're stuck in a conscious thought pattern. And again, that can be a difficult time letting go because for you, you think letting go is, is not caring or not being responsible. So these people often have also developed a coping mechanism of catastrophic thinking and negative expectations. And that's to deal with past disappointments, really. There have been things in the past that the way they perceive it now that were painful and the way they perceive it now is if I would just have thought more, done more, then I could have stopped that from happening. And now you're in a constant process of trying to do that. So another driver can be that you don't trust the process of life and you have a difficult time relaxing. Again, because the mind thinks if we relax, if we let go, we're not being responsible, we're not caring enough. Right? And like I mentioned before, these people will frequently replay the events of the day, going over what you could have done different. Um, you tend to focus on then guilt, fears, failures, perceived ways that other people are feeling about your interaction, the consequences of those things. Uh, and, and so for those people being in control, quote, unquote, of your environment and the people close to you is the only way that you actually feel safe. So again, that usually goes into uh, a childhood or belief very young that worry equals love. So if someone in your life worried about you, they worried about, you know, oh, be careful or, or be safer. Oh, no, you shouldn't do this. Or, oh, you need a code. Or, you know, just all that way of, and oftentimes it's a maternal um, worry and it could be grandparents, and it could be mothers, and it could be you know aunties or teachers, and sometimes it can come from men as well. But we perceived that as love. It's very possible that someone in your childhood said, well, I worry because I love you. And so as a child, we believe that. Oh, worry equals love. And we just make a link, boink. And we think then as we become adults that the way to love those people around us is to worry about them to be in constant thought about them. But oftentimes what we're doing is we're, we're watching them go through horrible things in our mind, horrible made up things in our mind, catastrophic consequences or catastrophic thinking. And we're worrying about all these bad things that could happen to them. But really what we're doing is just making that stuff up in our heads, right? And so oftentimes as well, these over worriers or these overthinkers will end up with family members that are like, ugh. Like, stop. And they'll actually push away. And they're doing that. What they're pushing away is not the person. They're pushing away the worry and the, the, the negativity and the catastrophic thinking. But the, the person doing this perceives their distance as an even scarier thing. Like, oh, no, they're pulling away from me. And then they worry about that even more. And so they try to hold tighter and pull tighter, which causes the person to push back which just gets the person in their mind more and more and more. And then they are not sleeping because they're just using all of their conscious awareness to continue to think. And again, people, they do not realize that they're doing this. It's so normal. They do it so much that they have no real awareness of the fact that they're in their heads so much. So again, to reiterate, the most basic level, insomnia is a result of being in our heads too much control, worry, catastrophic thinking. Okay, so the deeper call of insomnia is for us to get out of our heads and back into our bodies. So when we help clients with insomnia, we're looking for the deeper subconscious programming that is supporting it. Right, so maybe you've got the belief that worry is love or you know, maybe bad things happen that you never resolved and so you're at a, on a state of hypervigilance. Clearing those things is very helpful, 
But we also end up rewiring many of the undesirable and maladaptive links that insomnia often evolves to include. For instance, many people who do insomnia end up with negative associations to their bedrooms or their beds. They may also run through a subconscious not sleeping routine in their minds when they even begin to think about bedtime. For some people, we'll need to go in and actually clear all of those negative associations and habits and adaptions that they created to support the insomnia for it to be able to, to be so long standing. For instance, one client would uh, that we had that we worked with to resolve their insomnia would come up with a list of to-dos during the day that would keep her busy at night while she wasn't sleeping, right? So really in one sense, she's just planning to not sleep and coming up with all of these different things to do. So another client that we worked with would begin to feel a mounting dread during her bedtime routine. So with each step, brushing her teeth, flossing, changing into the pajamas, fluffing her pillow, she would get more and more and more anxious as she prepared to get into bed. She didn't realize that she was just reinforcing the insomnia and activating all of the stress hormones in her body right before she would, was supposed to be going to sleep. And though it can be debilitating for the sufferer, we can usually clear it rather quickly with the mind change method because we are going in and finding the emotional drivers and the behaviors and the beliefs that are supporting the problem. And that really gives us the tools that we need to build something different. For those of you out there or people that you know and love that are suffering with insomnia, there is hope, even if you've been doing it for a really long time. So I look forward to seeing you every other week as we dive into this fascinating topic. Please continue to leave those five-star reviews and comment if there is a particular condition, symptom, disease, or ailment you would like to hear covered. Until next time, thanks for joining us on the Mind Change Podcast, where we are changing the world, one mind at a time.